Good morning, guys. Tony Maritato is here. So in a minute, I'm going to be joined by Max Faust. Now, Max is a videographer, content creator. He is going to be talking to us about video and social media and really just helping physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists understand how we get our message in front of the right people, how we communicate the value in what we do, and how we can build our business using video as a primary media source. So let me bring Matt, Max on. All right. So Max, thank you so much for joining me today. I gave you a little introduction before you came on, but I know nobody watching this knows you yet. You're a Cincinnati kid. I would love to hear what you're doing these days. What got you into video? Kind of a little bit of context about why you're passionate about what you're doing first. And then I've got a bunch of questions about how video helps PTs, OTs, SLPs grow their business. So tell me about you personally first. Sweet. Uh, so I have really been into video for as long as I can remember. I remember being a kid and one of the first big purchases that I really wanted was a video camera. And at that time around, I don't know when this was like 2008 to 2012 kind of time frame. So video cameras were becoming a lot more accessible. And I just thought it was the coolest thing ever that I could make these videos with my friends and edit them on my computer. So something about it. And I think probably movies and television was huge for me as a kid something me and my brother and family could bond over so i've just always loved the visual medium of storytelling i've always preferred it to books i wasn't i, I like books i read some books but always like if a book i liked was getting turned into a movie it was that was my favorite thing i just really enjoyed uh the visual medium for whatever reason it 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 called me so then i kind of unfortunately ignored that side of me i had made a lot of videos as a kid and then as college was approaching you know i was i was a stem kid in high school really good at math and science so i just kind of thought you know this is where i'll have my best shot at making some money and at that point my mind was unfortunately just on like where can i have a good good career where i can make money i wasn't thinking too much outside of that so i actually attended ohio state for two years um did chemical engineering and after two years, well, actually, I had met an entrepreneur up at Ohio State and basically just started unlocking some things for me and realizing some things that I could actually do this. I could run my own business. And the more I got into in, into my studies, the more I realized, like, man, I, I just don't enjoy this. Uh, so then I decided after two years, I'm going to try to do my own thing and just see how it goes. If it doesn't go well, I can always go back to school. Um, but yeah, so I had been teaching myself video production and uh, started really small, just making as many videos as I could for friends, business owners that I knew personally, just to really work up my skill. And then, yeah, it's pretty much just been a process of that, of self-teaching and doing a lot of work to learn. And then I've gotten lucky to have some really great learning opportunities. Like I've worked on a Hollywood film set that was being shot in Cincinnati. Um, I've worked on some bigger pretty big commercial productions. Um, so those experiences have really taught me a lot about video production as well, beyond just the self-teaching from the internet. So that's kind of in a nutshell, how I got to where I'm at now. Nice. You know, and for people watching this for context, I always like people to know the background. Um, the only reason why I connected with you, you actually outreached to me. Now, most outreach is just a complete waste of time. Like I'm on LinkedIn. I get messages all the time. I usually just delete them or don't connect to that person. There was something about the way you introduced yourself, the way you were asking questions. I knew, at least I assume, um, you're trying to sell me. That's okay, though. I'm never against somebody trying to sell me. But the way that you ask the questions and then the way once I gave you the response that, hey, I'm already doing shorts, I'm already doing a ton of video, you're like, all right, great, that's awesome. And we kind of just stayed connected. Perfect. Like, I think that's exactly the kind of low pressure. You offer value, but you don't push for the sale. Um, it was perfect. And that's what actually got me to say, well, wait, this guy's in Cincinnati. I looked at your video content, great quality, but quality is kind of a commodity these days. Everybody has great quality. So I'm like, I want to get this guy on. I want to talk to him a little bit about it, pick his brain a little bit about what he sees happening in video and media 
And then this is clearly the start of a longer relationship. So that being said, I would love to hear from you. You know, what do you see as the future of video? We know that OpenAI put out Sora. It's the text to video tool. Um, I've seen some of the content that they're putting out, but just like anything, I, I try to use Dolly and I'm still getting humans with six fingers and three arms. Um, what do you see as the role of video moving forward with technology and AI? And how does somebody like you, who's behind the camera, who's doing the editing, how do you have a place in that future? No, that's a great question and definitely something I've thought a lot about in his been kind of on my mind because yeah there's always constantly evolving ai technology that if it keeps evolving the way it is people are gonna be able to type in a text and have the exact video they want produced and it'll look pretty much flawless and the question is how long is it going to take to get there is it going to be in 10 years 20 years 50 years uh the way technology goes i would bet sooner rather than later it's already looking pretty good and See things seem to take off exponentially. So unfortunately for video producers, AI seems like it's going to be able to do a very good job pretty soon. So that, that, and then mixed with that, just the, uh, the availability for people to already be making their own videos just with their smartphones and you can even edit it on your phone. All you need to make content is your phone. So right. You can do everything from shooting, taking pictures to editing, adding captions, anything you need. I prefer to use my computer for most of it because that's what I'm used to. But so kind of like spreading that, I'm sorry, kind of going off on a tangent. Um, but yeah, kind of, I want to empower these business owners to realize you guys have the power to make your own content. If you have a phone, you can be making your own content. And I think that can be very overwhelming for people for a number of reasons. And I'll get touch more on that, but to kind of connect it back to AI, I think that there is going, or at least I'm hoping, who knows, I think that there's going to be almost when AI takes over and that becomes the norm, there's going to be more of a reason to create your own content um, because, and this is the thing that I just won't really be able to answer. No one knows is will AI be a hundred percent the same? Because if it is, then yeah, people will probably stop producing videos. But I think that there's an element of human creativity that just can't be copied. And I think if humans can find a way to be incorporating that, whatever it is in their content, when this AI comes over, I think there'll still be a place for that, for that human touch and human feel. Um, but again, it's the question is how good will AI get at mimicking that to where it'll even matter. And when it yeah. comes to businesses, it does just come down to numbers, right? So if they can save thousands of dollars and it just looks slightly less human, then they probably won't care. Most of them. Um, I mean, there's a lot of companies that pay for stock marketing where these marketing companies will just post stock footage that has nothing that was not shot at their business at all. It's just kind of in the same industry. And so there's already kind of these uniform marketing techniques being used and implemented. But what I found is the businesses that can craft the, the most unique specific AI, or I just said AI, the most unique specific video or not even just video content marketing strategies are the ones that are the most successful with it. Because the whole point of the content marketing is to share, share yourself, to give insight, to connect on a human level. So when you're just having it manufactured with stock footage or even AI stuff, it can just come off as very manufactured and not personal and not human. So again, it, it depends how good will AI get at mimicking that, but I'm hoping there will there'll always be that, that human touch that just can't be mimicked. But yeah. let's say that, let's say that human touch is completely mimicked and AI nails it. Then I think it will move more into a strategy, which is super important, right? So, okay, you have AI and you can make any videos you want. Well, what videos are you going to make? What text are you going to type into that prompt? So that'll always be a question. Um, is what is the, what is the overarching plan here? Like humans are the ones that made AI. So even if we're using AI, we still have to know how to use it. So for video producers, content creators, marketers, it's probably going to move more into 
helping people use this AI where it's, it's here, it's going to get good. We just have to accept that and learn how we can adapt to it. And then even offering services, like we can do the AI production for you at a cheaper rate, but if you want actual videos, then that's this much money here uh, at a higher rate. So I'm, I'm really fascinated to see what that, how close it's going to get for sure. I totally agree. I mean, we've seen it a hundred times through human history. Every time a new technology comes into place, everybody gets scared that it's going to eliminate jobs, but then all it does is create new jobs. It increases the advancement. It, it increases individual productivity. Um, I, in a previous lifetime, before I was a physical therapist, was a graphic designer. I was supposed to go to the museum school in Boston or Carnegie Mellon. I decided not to do that. But I remember when Photoshop was just coming on the scene and everybody was freaking out about the ability of using Photoshop to do things. Uh, but like anything, it's a tool. AI is still a tool. All of these things are still tools. You said something that I think is really interesting to the audience. And you said video can be overwhelming. All of the components, all of the things. Anybody can pull out a smartphone and hit record. But pulling it all together and doing it in a way that really helps convey a message. And I'm going to be the first one to tell you, like in my world of physical therapy, we are amazing at creating value. We can help an individual stay in their house, aging in place. We can help individuals come back from horrific accidents. We can do so much. But where we fall short is communicating the emotion, communicating what we do, and helping the general population understand who we are. And so through video, that's where I think we can have the biggest impact. And when I'm looking at reaching out and connecting with videographers and media experts, you know, I looked at your website, a couple of things you talked about was developing content strategy, kind of a cohesive branding effort that you bring to it. Talk to me a little bit about some of your experiences working with local small business owners. I know you have some great videos from MMA, MMA gyms. Um, What's been your experience working with somebody who is a single owner operator? They have a small business. They know that they need to get on video, but they're just really struggling either to do it themselves or they just they're insecure. They don't want to be in front of the camera. What are some of the experiences you've had with that? No, those are all great questions. Um, So I think to start. So, trying to think of where I want to start at this from. Yeah. So I've had some, I've kind of worked with a range of businesses, some that make a lot of their own content and they do it really well. They love being in front of the camera and they seem to just be natural at it. And then some who really have no idea what to do and they don't really have any social media content or if they do, it's just not really up to standard. Um, And that's kind of led me to evolve my business in and shape it to where it's at now. So where I started was I was just, going for that high quality production and trying to find businesses who wanted really nice videos to represent their brand. And I still believe in that's a very powerful thing and having very high quality videos uh, will, and that crafted with a story, it's creating good videos, not just about the quality, the image quality, but the editing, the story, how everything's cut together. And I think that's still a very powerful tool, but there's so much more, uh, opportunity for content and video to be used other than that high production stuff. And there's kind of two factors that led me to shift my business to where it's at now. So one is even when I'd make a high quality video for these businesses, a lot of them just wouldn't really know what to do with it. They would like post it on Facebook, um, maybe run some Facebook ads, not have much luck, put it on their website. And then it's kind of like, okay, thanks. This is a, this is a great video. I love the way it looks, but I don't really know what to do now. And, and then that's bad for two things. One, because I want that business to do well, but then two, if their video isn't bringing them in more, more value, then that's not good for me. They're not going to come back for more work. So I was like, okay, I need to learn more about how to actually make these videos work for these businesses so they can grow and they will see the value in my work and want more of it. So it's just a win-win. Um, and that's when, yeah, I really realized that 
companies don't just need videos made for them. They need strategies. They need help posting where to post. And then even realizing through club MMA is a great example of this because they actually do a great job at producing a lot of their own content. And that's something that I, I wish a lot of other businesses could see because Jeff, the owner of club MMA, he's, he's really, he's really great at this stuff. And, um, I was talking with him about it the other day and he was like, so many martial arts school owners don't realize like they have a phone in their pocket. They could go out on the mat, have a kid hold it while they're teaching a move. Bam. That's something you can cut up in the free education to put out. You can, you can get B roll of students wrestling and while, while you're not teaching. So just kind of helping business owners being more aware of the opportunities that they're kind of missing out on. I mean, most business owners every day, have an opportunity to capture some form of content. And even if you're, I'm sorry, I kind of am going all over the place here. So if no, you ever you're, wanna, you're exactly right. Keep going. Cool. Awesome. If you ever do want to kind of like yeah. wrangle me back in, feel free to interrupt. Um, But yeah, so to sum it up, I've just found there's such a range of businesses. And what I found to be effective is like Club MMA kills it with creating their own content. And I think the high quality content that I've made for them is super important too, because you don't want to be posting all this content and then someone goes to your website and it's disappointing. You want to post content, get people's interest and then wow them with your high quality video content. Be like, man, this is a legit business. They look really professional. So, but the important thing, and it kind of hurts me to say this as someone who cares a lot about high quality video, but I, I, it's way more important, I think, to be consistently posting your own content than worrying about getting really high quality content. And that kind of depends on the industry, sure. But for the most part, I mean, social media is dominating everyone's lives. So if you're not active on there as a business, you're just, you're missing out. I mean, other companies in your industry are, and it's just, it's really, I don't, I'm trying to think of a nice word to say. It's kind of silly, I guess, not to be utilizing this. I mean, it's a free billboard you can be using. And then if you want to get paid ads and dump fuel on the fire, go for it. But it's just a free tool we could all be using. And the more you post, typically the better. Um, but the one caveat to that, that is what I think holds businesses back is the time and the money. And then that kind of all together, I think just overwhelms people and makes them think I'll focus on other stuff. So that just made me realize that's where my role is. I want to be able to help these businesses make it as easy as possible, almost acting like I'm the AI. So they just tell me what they want and I make it happen. Um, I will say there's a bit of an extra step where I off also offer companies to, they can capture their own content. So like I said, Jeff could go around capturing videos and pictures of his students. Um, he could get his students or another coach recording him teaching a, a lesson and then he can send that all to me and I can create content out of it. So really, ideally, is I like to be as involved with a business as possible because that way I feel like I can, I'm, I don't want to say I'm a control freak, but I like to make sure things go well, um, go up to my standards. So I offer from planning all the way to posting and optimizing and everything in between. So ideally, a company, would all they would have to do is just take pictures and videos and send them to me and I could run their social media and do the rest from there and even coach them up on how to get better pictures and videos. So what they are sending me, it, it just overall looks even better. And then if they do, a, I think that's the thing, what you just laid out that a lot of people don't realize is it's not an all or none. It, we need variety. We need homemade content. We need that shaky handheld phone camera video but we also need the high end stuff, the refined stuff, the stuff that clearly communicates exactly our value proposition in the market. And so when I look at somebody like you, and obviously this is growing in popularity, it's whether you're using AI generated content, you're taking my videos, you know, I, I always say just like the um, person you were talking about. I'm in the physical therapy clinic. I can capture clips all day long. I do a lot of short content. All my short content is I pull out my phone, I record a 15 second clip of something I'm telling somebody already or something I'm seeing already, and I post it. And that relates to other people, people that are dealing with the same condition, Mul multiple short videos of mine. They're not hitting the millions, but I've got over 150, 200,000 views on several videos already. And so 
creating and capturing that information. I love what Gary V said. So Gary V used to have, uh, what was his, um, K-Rock? What was his guy's name that did video? Oh, D-Rock, I think. D-Rock, really, was yeah. It? Was it? Yeah, D-Rock. So Gary V would say, don't think of creating video. Just think of capturing the stuff that you're doing on a daily basis already. And then you put it into hands of somebody like you because you've got millions of reps behind you. Yeah, I could do my own video editing, but that's not a good use of my time when I could give it to you and you could do it 100 times faster and better. And so what I wanted to, to talk about too before we wrap up is when I'm looking at the landscape of physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech language pathology, so much of what we've always done has been hidden behind closed doors, partly because of patient privacy and partly just because, you know, it's just weird we're talking about and dealing with very personal um, events that are affecting people's lives. But the more we hide what we do, the less access other people have to know what we're capable of doing. One of the things that I've worked with videographers before that I love to do, and I think you might offer something like this, is to say, hey, I want to do a four hour or a six hour shoot. I want you to come out to the clinic. I want you to just capture B-roll. I want you to capture real experiences. I, you might not know this, but I am required to use a HIPAA compliant media release for all of my clients. No big deal. I've never had a patient that didn't sign the HIPAA release. I didn't have a patient that wasn't enjoying the experience of being part of you know, the media process. And so two things come from an experience like that. One is we get a ton of footage. If I did something like that once a month, I probably have enough footage in six or eight hours of time that I don't have to do it for another month or two. I get a ton of shorts, I get a ton of long form, but what also happens, and I don't hear you guys talking about this very much, is all of the stills that come out of that, I can use those stills now when I'm writing media content for my website. I do a ton of SEO work. We know that Google wants to see original photos. I don't want to go to Pexels. I don't want to go to Canva. I don't want to use the same stock photography that everybody else is using. I want real people in my clinic and you guys can capture that for me. Um, so for anybody watching something like this, I know you do travel, but even within the local, you know, Kentucky, Indiana, Cincinnati area, I bet there is more than enough work out there for somebody to just say, hey, I want to hire Max, come out for six hours. I want you to capture a ton of content and then take it home, cut it up, repurpose it and give me that media package for the next two or three months. Is that something you do? Is that something you enjoy? You're actually spot on. Um, that's that's like my optimal client because I do offer um, just simply coaching and editing where they're shooting it all and I'll just coach them through it and edit it. But I would much prefer to go and get footage myself because one, I, I enjoy it. I love making videos, but I've also taken a lot of time to make learn how to make videos look really good. So like you said, if you let me come and get some footage now that content, and then you could either take and edit yourself or just let me edit it all into this content plan that we've already agreed upon. And now your footage looks way better. And like you said, it doesn't take, I, I love that you said that because that's, I think something that a lot of business owners don't really realize is you can knock out like a month, maybe two or three months worth of content just in one day depending on your business, depending on how much you post and what all goes on in that day. But, um, but no, that's, that's exactly right. And even, um, so yeah, I, I, I tend to ramble, but I'll, I'll leave it off at that. Yeah. That's definitely something I offer. And one of my favorite things to do. Awesome. So I know I've already taken you past the time that I, I asked for, what is the best way for people watching this to reach out to you, connect to you, follow you, see what you're doing? Yeah, so at faustfilm.media is my company's website. Um, that's probably the easiest way to get in touch. It's kind of just the central hub. I do have social media at faustfilm. Um, but if you just go to my website, faustfilm.media, F-A-U-S-T-F-I-L-M.media is probably just the easiest way. And then 
my email, phone number, and even a button to book a call should all be on there if you do want to get in touch. And then, of course, I know you're on LinkedIn because that's how we connected. Yes. So, Max, thank you so much for taking the time out today. I just I love hearing perspectives from people outside my profession because we're all dealing with the same problems. We're all dealing with the same challenges. We all need to do the same things to make our businesses successful. And to hear it coming from somebody else's perspective, I think it just adds value to anybody listening. So Max, hang out. Thank you so much for being here. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for having me. This is Absolutely. awesome.